Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Happy Model Mobile 7 HD Micro Brushless Swoop. The version that I've got is an early release, which is almost identical to the final version which should be out in the end of this month, except two changes which I'm going to point out later in my review. In this video I'm going to go over its specifications, quickly show you how to set it up, and of course head outdoors and test it out. Inside the box, along with the Mobula 7 HD, you're getting a 300mAh 3S LHB battery and a bag of accessories that contains one set of spare propellers, a propeller extractor tool, a screwdriver, an OSD control board for the Caldex Turtle V2 camera, two pieces of foam for securing the LiPo battery, and finally some extra screws, which are always handy. You should note that unlike the Mobula 7, along with the HD version, you're not getting a charger, and if you need one, you will need to buy it separately. The Mobula 7 HD is actually closer in terms of specs to the Ishin Trashcan than to the original Mobula 7. It is using the Mobula 7 V3 frame, which is almost identical to the Ishin Trashcan frame, except the V3 frame is made out of a more flexible material, which should be more durable. In addition, just like the trash can, the Mobula 7 HD is using the Razer Star Crazy B F4 Pro flight controller, but this is the version 2, which supports lipo batteries between 1 to 3 cells. It's available with an integrated Spectrum, FlySky, or non-EU FSky receivers, in addition to the option to get a version that doesn't come with the receiver. Since you're going to use either 2S or 3S lipo batteries, an XT30 connector is already pre-soldered to the board, unlike the trash can, which by default, comes with two PH2 connectors. As for motors, it is using 1102 10,000 kV Happy Model branded motors, and on top of them we can find 40 mm props. The VTX that is being used is the same VTX of the Ishin trash can. It features 40 channels and smart audio, and has selectable output range of 25, 100, and 200 mV. The key feature of the Mobula 7 HD is of course the Cadex Turtle V2 camera, which is located over here on the front, and in case you already noticed, I already broke the frame, and this is one of the major difference between the version that I have and the released version. My version is just using a 3D printed canopy, which is very fragile, and I already broke it, and the released version is going to use a molded canopy, which, at least as far as I've been told, is going to be much more durable. The camera connector of the Codex Turtle V2 has been removed, and the wires are soldered directly to the board, and that's the reason I couldn't configure the camera easily using the provided OSD control board. However, I've been told by Happy Model that on the final version, the OSD control board lead is going to be soldered to the board, which will enable you to configure the camera. The weight of the Mobula 7 HD is 46.5 grams, not including the provided battery, and 71.6 grams including it. So of course, it is heavier than my modified Ishin trash can that weighs 36.6 grams, and then the original Mobla 7 that weighs only 28.6 grams. On the other hand, it is much lighter than the Maker Fire Armor 85 HD, which I'm about to review in the next few days, which weighs 73.4 grams without the battery. By default, the Cadex Turtle V2 camera is not set to start recording the video when the battery is connected, but you can simply change it using the provided OSD control board. In addition, the start and stop button is located over here, and you'll be able to access it without any issues, and you can also simply disconnect the battery in order to stop the recording, but you should note that about 2 seconds of the recorded HD footage is going to be lost. The microSD card slot is located over here, and you'll be able to access it without any problems. And in case you wonder, since I already crashed the frame, on my crash the microSD card wasn't ejected, and I think that it's going to take a very severe crash for it to happen. The included 3S type of battery is going to fit inside the battery bottom bay, but you will need to kind of squeeze it in in order to fit. In addition, you can also squeeze in this 2S LHV 550mAh GNB battery, which I also tested in my test flight. I also tested the Tonergy Nanotech 300mAh LiPo battery, which fits without any issues on the bottom, as you can see, and also this 300mAh TBS LHV battery, which also fits quite well. You should note that by default, the radio receiver antenna is located here, and then you might rip it off when inserting a battery. So what I advise you to do is to simply change its position and 
make it stick from the front side and then it's going to be much more protected. Just as a reminder, since the Crazy B Racer Star F4 flight controller comes pre-flashed with Beta Flight 4, you can simply bind the receiver by hitting bind. Then it's going to enter bind mode, so you can see all the four LED in the bottom are solid. And then you will just need to set your FR Sky receiver, for example, on mode D8 or mode D16, depending on the protocol that you've pre-configured. By default, it is set to FR Sky X, which is using the D16 protocol, but if you'd like, you can also change it to FR Sky D, and then you'll be able to bind it using the D8 protocol. The settings of the Mobula 7 HD are very similar to the settings of the Ishin trash can, and I'm also going to include a link to the dump file down below. The only difference, as far as I know, is the pit tuning, and these are the pit settings that, by default, the Mobula 7 HD is using. One thing that I forgot to mention before is that the angle of the camera is of course adjustable and you can set it all the way up to this position which is going to be useful if you're going to fly it outdoors using the 3S like a battery and all the way down to this position which is going to be useful if you're going to fly it using 2S especially indoors. The next thing I'm going to do is to show the flight footage using these four like batteries and I will see you in a bit in order to give you my conclusion. Stop. 
So overall, I can tell you that I'm really impressed with the Happy Model Mobula 7 HDD. The flight time I could get was close to three and a half minutes using the Turnigy 2S Lipa battery. In addition, even though it's not as agile as the original Mobula 7 and the trash can, it's still very fun to fly and you can do some maneuvers. However, on some deep dives, you are going to get some wiggling, which probably can get sorted with further pit tuning. Regarding my crash, which broke the canopy, as I mentioned before, the final version is going to use a molded canopy, which is going to be more durable and should also provide you with a better protection for the camera. And one of the problems with the Cadex plastic camera is that maybe it's not going to break easily, but it gets scratched pretty easily. So you need to protect it. Otherwise, you will need to change it pretty soon. Out of the four batteries that I tested, I think that the most recommended battery is this Tonergy 300 mAh 2S battery because I got plenty of fly time and also it kept the quadcopter pretty light, which made it more agile. And the problem, as far as I know, this battery is only available with a GST connector, so you will need to get XT30 connectors and solder it on your own. Regarding the 3S type of battery, the quadcopter was much faster and I had to adjust the angle all the way to the top in order to fly it. But the problem is that the fly time wasn't that great and I got less than two minutes of fly time. Now, even though my review of the Maker Fire HD is not done yet, I've already tested it. And I can tell you that the Mobula 7 HD wins without any doubt because the fly time is better, it's more enjoyable to fly and also I got much less jello. Because after all, this is a simple question of weight ratio. A five ounce bird could not carry a one pound coconut. Well, it doesn't matter. Will you go and tell your master that Arthur from the court of Camelot is here? So if you're in the market for an HD Whoop, I think that the Mobula 7 HD is going to be a great option. And if you don't care much for HD footage, you should probably go either with the Ishin trash can or with the Mobula 7. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about any of the products that I've shown you in the video, you can feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.